gave us this book so we continue to recite it and memorize it and reflect on it and every time we do the light gets a little stronger and a little stronger and a little stronger and a little stronger Allah is saying if you keep this up I will guide you all the way to my light I will have you meet me you can see my light one day you can get to be in the company of Allah one day yahdi Allah li nurihi man yasha wa yadribu Allah al-amthala lin-nas Maybe we've been killing a light inside of ourselves. Maybe some of you really like to buy lamps and chandeliers and put up, you know, nicer lighting inside your homes and you love the stores and the restaurants that have beautiful lighting, but you know what? You and I start need to worrying about lighting inside of ourselves a little more. But we need to revive the relationship of an entire family with the houses of Allah. We need to do this. This is critical. This is not just a side matter. Then on top of that we need to revive the legacy of praying as a family. If you're not going to go to the masjid, at least pray as a family in your homes. Turn the light on and pray. Wake up your children for fajr and pray. Some of you fathers, your children have never heard you reciting Quran and that's a tragedy. And you say I don't recite it properly. I don't care. You're not getting an ijazah in tajweed anytime soon. It's okay. Whatever you know, recite. Even that is light. It's not a flood light. It's not a stadium light, but it's still light. It's still good. So Allah wants us to deeply reflect and think about the concept of light. To think about light. So I'll say a few things about light. If there is no light, then doesn't matter how beautiful the universe is, we see nothing. Doesn't matter if you and I have both eyes. Our eyes are useless without the presence of what? Light. Reality as we know it around us is actually irrelevant entirely. All we have around us then is darkness and nothing. And incidentally, we know now that light isn't just a means by which we can see, light is a fundamental to life on this earth. Without light, you don't get plants. And without plants, you don't have life. Life is es light is essential to life. There are two things. In the Arabic language, by the way, one of the words for eyes themselves is nur. Vision itself is also called nur. So in order for us to appreciate vision, to see reality around us, there are two things necessary. This light, the light inside of you, the light of your eyes, nurul ayn, and also you need light outside. A light inside and a light outside. If any one of those is missing, you're as good as blind. Isn't that clear? Is that simple enough for everybody? Okay, now let's take it a step further. This is physical light. What I just talked about is physical light. But Allah is telling us something about spiritual light by making us think about physical light because they're similar. Now in the spiritual sense, there's a light inside of us. It's not here, it's here. There's a light Allah poured inside of us. When I was inside my mom's belly, then an angel was delivered to put some light inside of her. That would be something I would be pre-programmed with. All of you, the ruh is a form of light. That is inside of us. There's a light inside of us. But that light on its own can only see so much until, there, until there's what? Light on the outside, right? There has to be light on the outside. So now what is that light on the outside? Allah Azza wa Jal describes His book. He describes His book and He says, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا Believe in Allah and His Messenger and the light that we've sent down. Just like there are two ingredients to physical light, there are two ingredients to spiritual light. The human being has a yearning inside of him and her. They have, we have this light inside of us that wants something. It's looking for some kind of perfection because it came from a perfect source. So when revelation comes, when the word of Allah comes, when the teachings of His Prophet come Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they complete that light inside. And yet when Allah brings His light, when He brings the sun out, what happens? They say in Arabic, أَغْنَى الصَّبَاحَ عَنِ الْمِسْبَاحَ That the lamp made the, 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 the morning made the lamp irrelevant. You, your light and my light, does, keeping the lights on in the morning, especially if you're this, you'd never do it actually. You don't even turn them on at night time. But anyway, you definitely wouldn't turn them on in the day. Because the sun's enough. Just open the window, move the curtains, the sunlight is enough. It'll light everything else up. In other words, Allah's light is overwhelming and undeniable. There's no escape from it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. Bima qaddama, what did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? 
What took precedence? وَمَا أَخَّرَ And what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait. I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, right, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. The one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا Then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat, staring right at you. That's what it's going to be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, you'll be looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, مَا لِهَذَا kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرْ What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed, this was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams, I want to memorize the Qur'an. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? That was a priority for you. What do you want it to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ No, no. Yes, on that day the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather the case is that the human being, عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self, بَصِيرًا Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you, and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves, about ourselves, and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job. You got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. 
You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us, He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make, we don't concern ourselves, if we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In tatawallu yastabdil qawman ghayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. You turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves. And they will not be like you. They will not be lazy like you. And those are when, Mus when young Muslim people have real iman. When young Muslims have real like, strength in their belief, then they, can, they have the power to change the world. They have the power to make the world a, a better place. But when young Muslim people don't have real iman, they don't have real conviction, then they are a waste of space. They are a waste of society, a waste of a generation. The only thing in their life, the, only, the biggest, the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out? The most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out? The next most important thing is, man, I wish I had that car. That's it. Your life doesn't go any further than that. My teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, you throw a hook and you climb. If you throw a hook not very high, then you will only reach that much. You can't reach any further. If your goal is money, if your goal is a six pack, if your goal is a car, if your goal is a promotion, if your goal is entertainment, if your goal is girls, whatever your goal is, then you're only gonna get that, you won't get anything else. But if your goal is something higher, to serve something more than yourself, you don't live a selfish life. You wanna live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others. That's how you want to live. Then you will benefit yourself definitely, but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher. Our deen in this beautiful ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have, in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday.